Gamers and claimers, ladies and gentlemen from around the universe, from around the globe, from around the community, welcome to the Power, Purpose, and Passion podcast. I am your host, Anthony Cheem, speaker, life coach, author, trainer, musician, singer, songwriter, podcast host, friend to you, giving to you in care and love and wisdom and passion for you. The best of what I've learned and earned and being in this beautiful industry, spiritual, emotional, mental, peak performance, physical, relationships, everything that I've learned, I wanted to devour it so then I could become a better human being, a best version of myself, better version of myself, and claim my power, clarify my purpose, and cultivate my my deepest, widest, highest, highest passions. That's why I was on this journey initially. But now I want to share it and love and care for you with, with the world, with family, friends, community, so you can then claim your power, clarify your purpose, and cultivate your deepest, widest, and highest passions possible. And ultimately, showing up as a better, more advanced, upgraded, and updated version of yourself. And then ultimately, the ultimate goal then is to share and sort of learn and earn and then share your wisdom, return your wisdom, your love, your care to the world so you can contribute and feel that sense of total fulfillment and meaning because your life mattered and other people will just be so joyful that your life was even here because you impacted their life and that's what it's all about and that's what we're all, that's why we're here today giving you the best uh, on this podcast so thank you for joining us it's an absolute pleasure and a privilege i know i say that on every show but i just want to acknowledge that every single time because gratitude is one of the greatest attitudes and qualities you can you can possess and and don't take it for granted because when you're in a state of gratitude, you're in a state of plentitude. And when you're in a state of plentitude, there's enough for everyone to go around. And you get filled up. You make deposits into your own heart, your own mind, your own belly, your own body, mind, emotion. Everything gets filled up. And then you just want to overflow with sharing. And that's just a natural byproduct of being grateful. So today's episode, before we get into it, um, what's up, Cam? How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing really, really well. Uh, Good. You know, today, uh, it's Wednesday, middle of the week. Loving life, loving the snow. Um, <laughs> yes. Hard to sleep at night because cause I'm just mm. so aware now that I'm doing what I'm doing, which I'll we'll obviously get into in this podcast. Yes, also, yes. funny thing that I want to yes. mention is yeah. podcast is about patience. And a while ago, you had this thing where you were kind of practicing one virtue a month. Yes. And patience, I think, was the first one. Yes. And when you yes. were talking about patience it did not resonate even just a little for me. Like I didn't feel like I was like, ah, yes. I don't need patience. Yeah. I'm fine. But now I realize the the value of it and not just mm. patience with others, but patience with yourself. Yes. And um, yeah, to me, it just like to, to put it broadly, it lightens the expectations because expectations yes. can really screw you up. And when you're yes. patient, you're not, yeah. you're no longer expecting so much yeah. to happen right now yes. or yes. right now in a time frame that is convenient for you, you know? For sure. So yeah, it's, it's a, definitely a life changing thing and I'm excited mm. to get into this. Yeah. So being patient with yourself and I appreciate you, you can reflecting on that. And that was, as I reflect back on practicing one virtue a month in that first month, I was certainly practicing ver, uh, the patient, the, the virtue of patience, the quality of patience and just watching myself, watching the tension, watching the mental patterns that go inside myself that control us these knee-jerk reactions, nar narcissistic reactions, I was able to watch myself doing it and then just kind of make the choice and create some space and actually just choose to be patient. Because patience isn't necessarily something of a, a, not necessarily an emotion that you actually feel. It's something that you practice on a daily basis. That uh, There's a saying in a, in a Course in Miracles that says, infinite patience equals immediate results. And there's a paradox there. That if you're infinitely patient, you'll get immediate results. And I have to say, and, and one of my friends, I remember, I, I've said this on this podcast before, but uh, this one spiritual teacher was basically saying that they actually, to practice patience, they will actually get, go into, consciously go into a longer line <laughs> at a grocery store to practice patience. They won't go into the shorter line. Yeah, how many times do you have you cam and I've done it myself. We look at the look at the shortest line and you're like I got and and you're 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 running there because you want to be the first one in there. Right? It's like oh, yeah, I do that. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> yeah, so it's like at Costco especially. You see these on a Saturday afternoon at Costco, you're sprinting for the shortest line, but this this guy decided to do the opposite. He actually chooses the longest line and therefore he is able to practice patience when you know your, your, your cynic, your ego is going to want to come out and go, let's speed this up. And that's exactly the time when practicing patience is the most important. Uh, 
And Joyce Meyer, who wrote a book, um, Battlefield of the Mind, she said in, in one, it may have been in that book, but she said something like this. She said, patience isn't just the act of waiting. It's how you behave while waiting. And I thought, ooh, that is so good. Patience is not just the act of waiting, but how you behave while you are waiting. That is so good because you can wait, but you can wait in angst and anger and frustration, right? But what she's saying is how are you behaving when the anger and the impatience arises inside you? As I heard one teacher say, patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. Patience is bitter. It's tough, but its fruit is sweet. I, I think that has a lot to, to relate to that first quote I gave you about uh, infinite patience equals immediate results. It's that paradox that when the more patient you are, the faster results you get, it's almost, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of ironic and eerie um, to think of it that way. But I think what, what that quote's trying to say is the more you're patient with yourself, the more you're going to enjoy life, the more the journey becomes the destination and you more, not, not, not just that you're trusting and enjoying the journey, but the journey becomes more enjoyable. You have more clarity and focus. You're able to act with accordance with patience and calmness and cent uh, and, and centeredness. And when you're acting from that pe uh, from that point of view, from that state of consciousness, action becomes natural. Actions become so much more freeing. I remember when I was writing my first book, it took me 18 months to finish that book. And I was, let me tell you, writing a book, you have to practice patience. And there were times when I'd write two or three pages. There were times when I write no pages for a whole week or a month. And then there were times I'd write three or four chapters in like a day. And I'm like, oh, this book's never going to get done. I said, no, I'm enjoying this process. And I, I like what Khalil Gibran said about his book, Writing, uh, Writing the Prophet. He said this magnificent saying. He said, when I was writing the book, The Prophet, The Prophet was writing me. And, and it's, it's that idea that when you're writing, when you're composing, when you're in an act of where subject and object become one, patience takes over, uh, object, subject dissolve, and you just become one with that action, whether it be playing music or painting your house or playing with your kids or on a date with a girl or a, or a man that you're in love with or whatever it is. And patience becomes a, a direct byproduct of being one with that particular activity. The, the next quote I want to give to you is from, I believe it's, I'm going to, I'm going to read it from this. Uh, uh, give me one second. Bear with me for a second, guys. Um, give me a sec. Uh, here we go. A guy found it. Okay. All right. It was St. Therese of Lisieux. She said this, we must bear patiently not being good and not being thought good. We must bear patient, patiently not being good and not being thought good. That's hard. It's hard to be patient with yourself when you've just royally screwed up, right? Like, Cam, let's say you, you had every intent to do something today and you just didn't do it. And you just said, I'm going to do this. And then you didn't do it. And what's the first thing that comes up at the end of the day when you reflect on your day, when you said we had full intention to do something and you didn't do it, you didn't follow through? What's the very first thing that comes up? I, I want to ask you, Cam. First thing that comes up would be uh, just beating up on myself, feeling like I don't have control over my actions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because sure, I can intellectually want to do this thing, but I can't mm -hmm. get myself to do it. So I see, I feel like... I have no control over yes. what I'm yes. doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. So beating up yourself becomes the, the very first natural reaction that the ego, the inner cynic, that's the first stance that it takes, that, that you, your, your ego takes, is to beat yourself up, to just grind you down and say, you loser, and you hear every single voice inside you saying, why didn't you do that? That quote, we must bear patiently not being good and not being thought good, is the very antidote to beating yourself up is actually looking at the inner cynic and saying, I'm okay with not falling through today. I'm going to learn from it. I'm taking responsibility for it. I'm acknowledging it, but beating myself is not the same thing as taking responsibility. So thank you for your input. And I'm going to move on right now and being able to speak to that part of you being able and with no anger or nothing personal, just acknowledge that, that, that archetype, that cynic is coming up, acknowledge it and then move on, move forward. I'll give you an example of this. I was uh, recently, literally the past couple of days, um, I came home, my wife family came home and we came home to a leak in our kitchen. And I, I didn't think it was a leak. Long story short, I wiped it and then it was wet again. I'm like, Oh, we got a leak somewhere. And it was determined that it was from my dishwasher. 
And then I'm going, okay. So we had to turn off the water and then our kitchen faucet needed to be replaced. And then we found out our, 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 our ensuite bathroom fan had to be replaced. So it was all coming down. I'm like, okay, whatever. It's fine. So I had a, a buddy of mine come over and fix it. So he fixed the kitchen faucet. Fits, he, uh, it was determined that we needed a new, new dishwasher. Fine, whatever. It's fine. Then they were going to fix my, um, my bathroom ensuite fan. And as they're replacing it, uh, replacing it my friend calls up to me and says, Anthony, come up here for a second. I got some news. He said, your bathroom fan wasn't connected properly. Your original bathroom fan wasn't connected properly to your roof or to the ventilating system. And he showed me, he moved the actual ventilation system. And he said, this should not be moving like this. And it wasn't connected properly. I said, so what does that mean? He says, well, the moisture wasn't going out of the vent. It was going into your attic. And for people that know, they're like, oh, what does that mean? So I basically said to myself, and I said to him, is that, does that mean what I think it means? He goes, well, I don't know if there is going to be mold in your attic, but I'm going to go up there right now and I'll, I'll let you know in a very short time. So what was the first thing that came up to that? And I'd known people that have had uh, mold in their attic. And let me tell you something, that's like a 10, 15, depending on how big your attic is, 10, 15, 20, $25,000 job. And that's not cheap. So I was not expecting to spend that much money. So my cynic, everything possible outcome was coming out of me going, Oh my God, well, what, what, 10, 15 grand. Is, oh my God, freaking out. Oh my God, I, why is this happening? And I'm like, okay. And I actually had to sit back down and be patient with myself. And I said to myself, hold on a second here. What are the facts? Let's get the facts here. The fact is, I don't even know if it's mold. So don't presume, assume anything that anything's happening. So until you get the facts, your best course of action in this moment is to let it go and proceed with kindness and compassion with yourself and with your current client that's about to show up in the next five minutes. And so I did that. It's again, Joyce Meyer says in that quote, patience is not the simply the act of waiting. It's how you behave while waiting. I could have, the old me, the old version of Anthony would have been just outraged. I would have called everyone like, I would have called the, the builder of our home. Oh my God, the injustice, the injustice. I can't believe it's freaking out, freaking out. And that would have just canceled my day. I decided, no, this is not going to cancel my day. This might rough it up a bit, but I'm going to, until I get the facts, I'm going to bear patiently with this because I can't control it. And until I get the facts, I'm going to move on. And then I ended up having a great session with a client, let it go. And then I went back upstairs to receive the news. And I actually prepared myself mentally in this position. I remember going to myself, closing my eyes and saying, whatever the outcome is, if there is mold and I need to pay 10, 15, whatever, I'm going to be okay with it because I'm blessed and highly favored and I'm going to handle it. I've handled a whole lot worse things in my life. Get over it. Just, I'm so glad that they found it early. Not, you know, when the person actually people, the new people moved in, in January point was, and if it didn't happen, I'd be grateful either way. I'm okay with it. I'm just going to go in open-minded, open heart. That's it. Completely done, unattached. So I went into the bathroom and then I heard a, heard a voice from the attic. Hey, Anthony, what's going on? I said, Oh, not much, man. So well, what's the verdict? And he said, you want the good news or the bad news? I'm like, Oh gosh, are you kidding me right now? I said, just give me the bad news because if you give me the bad news first, the good news will actually kind of just minimize the bad news. Cause if you give me the good news first and then the bad news, then it'll minimize the good news. So I said, so he said, well, you sure you want to know? I said, the bad news. He goes, are you sure? I said, yes. He goes, there is no bad news. There's nothing up here. I said, oh my God. And I was like, they're in ju- like mental and emotional jumping jacks, right? <laughs> Spinning. I'm like, oh my God. So what was interesting about that moment was the, the thousand dollars I spent on a dishwasher and fixing my faucet and all these other things became a delight compared to not spending 15, whatever, 20 grand on a, on a, on a, you know, a pro, like a, a, me assuming that there was uh mold in, in my attic. Anyway, the point, of, point is, was what I did there prior to reaching that verdict was bearing patiently with myself and the outcomes that I am not in control of. I was bearing patiently. I, I said to myself, I have to get the facts first because too many people assume the worst and they feel it, they experience it. And then, you know, I'm sure you can have had the experience where so, you thought something, something happened and you freak out about it and then only to realize it didn't even happen. And it's like a coward thousand, dies a, a thousand times, a courageous man or woman dies but once. And that's the whole idea. D- until you get the facts, d- there's, no, no, there's no reason why you should be freaking out. And that's bearing patiently, that's becoming more aware of the subtle patterns that are controlling your life and letting go of your attachments and things that you can't control. And that's part of patience and being patient with yourself as well. 
What about yourself, Cam? Like any added uh, flavor to this this meal of patience? The meal of patience. Yes. Um, well, to be honest, the best meals are the ones that take the longest. Let's be real. <laughs> when Amen. you take five hours on a casserole, best <laughs> oh. casserole I've ever had in my life. Um <laughs> Yes, amen, brother. No, amen. but uh, what I wanted to say was, because um, I know you went into the direction of, um, you know, if something happens that's out of your control. Yes. And, you know, what what do you do in that moment? You really, you have no control, so you have to, and many times there's like yeah. information, like you said, that you have to wait for. So you don't even get the full story right away. You can't even <laughs> handle the full yes. thing. You'd have to like yes. guess yes. and wonder yeah. for a while. Um, and yes. it's like that with everything. Yes. It's like that, you know, you go down on a date or something and you go home and you're just mm. like, what do they think? How was it? How'd it go? You know, and you're like just yes. anxiously waiting or you go to a job yes, interview yes. and you come home. There's yes. always going to be things. So yes. I'm glad you mentioned that. But what I wanted to mention was um, what you do have control over and being patient with yourself in that sense. Like yes. uh, for me, as an example, I finally took my money, went to a gym and signed up for 11 week for an 11 week workout class program <clears throat> thing. Love it. Love it. And you know, it's 11 weeks. Like, I don't know when you think about 11 weeks from now, you're just kind of like, Oh, well that's forever. <laughs> but really, yeah. um, uh, working out, you know, once a week in class and staying accountable, eating better slowly, but surely every day, um, you will notice results emotionally, will. physically, will. energetically, it's uh, inevitable. In your sleep, yeah. like no matter what, you're going to notice results. Yeah. There's like little yeah. things that you could do each day. Um, yeah. And I started this thing where, you know, I woke up one morning and I realized I did not like the place I was in. I just did. I looked around in my life and I was like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. You know, not everything is bad, obviously, but you have mm. to know what's wrong. You have to know where you're not satisfied. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I just kind of figured, you know what? 200 days. Every single day, I've got a journal. I'm going to write down what I learned that day, what steps I'm taking that day, even if it's just the smallest thing. Like yes. rest is a step. Yes. Yeah. Sleep, like just taking a day off is a step in mm -hmm. the right direction, in my yeah. opinion. Yep. So keeping count of every single day and all the steps into the right direction, I think, can really add up. And I told you, I think, before we even got on the podcast that it's only yeah. day 10. And, and it feels like it's been five months. Yeah. It's day 10 and, and 10 days ago I was in another world. It's yeah. uh, what they call it the compound effect. Yes. Right. Yes. And usually you're not supposed to expect any results, whether you're on your health journey, your relationship journey, your business journey, or even just personal development emotionally. Um, yeah. You don't really notice these crazy results until mm -hmm. you've um, passed past some sort of threshold and then all of a sudden things just pop and i'm sure you experienced that financially with your business i certainly yes. have yeah um where it takes you like takes yeah. you like three years to make your first dollar <laughs> yes but then yes. um you yeah. know a month later you've just like 10x your income and then yeah so on so forth yeah yeah um, but exactly. it's, it's all exactly. about the day the every single it day. is all about the day dude i remember yeah. even just the metaphor of you know, the Chinese bamboo tree, it takes like four years to actually, for the bamboo tree to actually pierce the surface of the soil, but they have to water it and nurture it every single day. Otherwise the bamboo tree will die. But for four years, there's no sign of the bamboo tree actually piercing through the actual ground. So they're watering it for every day for four years. That's what, uh, 1200, 1400 days. They're doing that patiently right not seeing any results and then they said by the fifth year within six weeks it grows like 90 feet something like that something ridiculous so the question is did the bamboo tree grow in six weeks 90 feet or did the bamboo tree go four years and six weeks in four years and six weeks right and so you must bear patiently in those times act be persistent yes focus on the action at hand be present all those things that, that go along with personal and professional development and, and the practicing of those things. You learn those things by action, by experience. And that kind of reminds me of this sort of story that was written in a book by Pema Chodron. She's a Buddhist monk, uh, phenomenal, phenomenal Buddhist leader. Uh, to me, she, her wisdom, she's a mystic. She's a modern day mystic. She's amazing. She wrote a book called The Wisdom of No Escape, How to Love Yourself in Your World. And there's a story, a quick story. I'll just sum it up quickly. There's a story of a woman running away from tigers. 
She runs and runs, and the tigers are getting closer and closer. When she comes to the edge of a cliff, she sees some vines there. So she climbs down and holds onto the vines. Looking down, she sees that there are tigers below her as well. She then notices that a mouse is gnawing away at the vine to which she is clinging onto. She also sees a beautiful little bunch of strawberries close to her, growing out of a clump of grass. She looks up and she looks down. She looks at the mouse. Then she just takes a strawberry, puts it in her mouth, and enjoys it thoroughly. Tigers above, tigers below. This is actually the predicament that we are always in, in terms of our birth and death. Each moment is, is just what it is. I might be the only moment of our life. It might be the only strawberry we'll ever eat. We could get depressed about it, or we could finally appreciate it and delight in the preciousness of every single moment of our life. Boom. That's it right there. That's it right there. And um, being able to practice that in our moments of severe, severe distress, that there is no stress out there. It's our perceptions about a particular uh, uh, you know, situation that creates the stress. So if we're able to be present, be patient with ourselves, be patient with the journey, trust in it. And let me tell you something, magical things will happen. Just like that, that quote from A Course in Miracles, infinite patience equals immediate results. And I have certainly experienced that in my own life. And I'm certain that everyone at some level, no matter how, my, how minute or minuscule in your experience, people that are listening to the show have experienced it some way, shape or form, whether it be spiritual or relationship, money, business, success or whatever, insight, or even just playing a song on the piano. I'm sure you've learned this too when you, when you were actually learning to play guitar or drums, man. Like you're trying to get, get a certain beat or certain song and you can't get, you can't get it. You just continue plugging away and you're immediately, you're infinitely patient with it. And then one day you wake up and you play it perfectly for the very first time. Now, did you play that song perfectly the first time? No, it took you that many millions and thousands of times leading up to that actual uh, perfect melody or perfect song that you were, you, were, you were meant to play it. So that's what it takes. It really takes patience. It really takes sort of perseverance and a level of presence with whatever action you are involved in. So hopefully today's episode, I certainly enjoyed this today's episode a lot. I really did. Um, and, and Cam, thank you for showing, sharing as always. You're, you're a beast, man. 21 years old and you're, and you're doing this journey. I can't, I can't even imagine where you're going to be the next 20 years. And um, I'm certainly, you'd probably, you'd probably be 10 X than where I am today. It'd be amazing <laughs> to be a part, to be a part of that journey on your journey and the people that listen to the show. Thank Any you. last words, man? Any last words? Uh, no, I honestly, I really appreciate, uh, the kind words. Um, <laughs> it's weird to think about, you know, like mm. 20 years from now, like it's going to yeah. be a time. It will be a present moment soon. Yes. It's, yes. it's wild. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's where I become even more patient in myself because I mm -hmm. think to myself 200 days ago, yeah, I was, I did not have the same problems I do now. All, <laughs> all that stuff is solved. Yeah. And I got a new yeah. batch of lessons to learn, yeah. you know? So. Yes. Yeah. Amen, brother. So thank you for joining us on this podcast. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, if you want to listen to us and subscribe to our show, either on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, any podcast platforms, or reach out to us on either email at my website, anthonycheam.com, or on YouTube, you can subscribe there and watch it live. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Ask any questions, Instagram, Facebook, any of those platforms. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us, guys. To your continued upgrade and evolution, live it up with power, purpose, and passion. God bless and have an amazing day. Okay.